Pia Zadora is a pop culture icon with a very exotic look. She's a singer, actress, and devoted mom. Pia Zadora also won a Golden Globe Award, a Grammy nomination, performed with the London Philharmonic Orchestra, and so much more. She made headlines when she was married to that rich guy, uh, Mishulam uh, Rickless. And now in Vegas with her husband, Michael Jeffries, and son, Jordan, Pia is packing rooms with her new show, which is giving new life to great standards. Please welcome the beautiful Pia Zadora. Pia, welcome to the Mark Berman Show. Wow, you got your facts down, don't you, Mark? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I do my homework. It took me four weeks to write that. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, well, wow. Yeah, but you didn't say that I was born in Hoboken. Well, no, that's what I was going to ask you. See, I was going to say you you have one of the greatest names ever, and, and combined with your look, personally, for me, uh, seeing you all these years, uh, I, I could not figure out if you were from Tahiti or Hawaii. So and you just told me you grew up in Hoboken. Yeah, no, you just and you just told me you grew up in Hoboken. Yeah, I know exotic. because I do have a sort of an Asian look because my eyes are kind of almondish, and I've got the high cheekbones. But actually, I'm half Polish and half Italian. My mother was Polish, my father was Italian. So I guess yeah, that's you, pretty exotic, right? <laughs> oh no, Hoboken's exotic. You know, one of the greatest of all time is from Hoboken. G. Gordon Liddy. No, Frank Sinatra. Okay. Right, right. We had adjoining mangers. So I know that. Well, but you were mentored by Francis Albert. You got to talk to us about that. I mean, you knew him. I tell you, I was, you know, I was doing pop music. I was nominated for Grammy, you know, rock singer in 1984, lost to Tina Turner, and then Frank came along. And Frank was like, no, you need to sing the standards, and I want you to tour with me. And I'm like, yes, sir, anything you say, because it's not easy to say to Frank. <laughs> Actually, it was a great story because I was appearing with Jackie Mason up at Fountain Blue in Florida, and he came to see the show. And, of course, everybody gets nervous when Francis Albert comes to see the show. Yeah. And the next day, he sent me this beautiful bouquet of white roses with a little note saying, you knocked in dead kid from the guy with the blue eyes. And like an hour later, his people called me and said, Francis Albert or Frank would like you to go on tour with him because Liza fell out and he and Don are going on tour and he wants you to join the tour. And I'm like, yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> what do you oh, say, wow. Francis Albert? <laughs> In retrospect, he really changed my life because, you know, I was at a point where I needed to mature and doing this kind of music was really cathartic for me because I needed to really come back in a big way because I had all that crap going with the movies and, and the Lolita image and the rich husband image. So I needed to kind of establish myself as the singer that I was because I come from a family of opera singers, started on Broadway when I was seven, you know, all that stuff. And I needed to get back there and show who I was because of all the crap that was thrown at me. And he gave me the opportunity and the credibility and, you know, just taking me over as a mentor meant a lot to everybody else because, like, oh, wow, he likes her. Well, you know, let's take another look at her. And so then I ended up doing the PN Phil album and going to Carnegie Hall and going to the Palladium in London and doing all the standards and all that stuff. And what happened after that was I did a Broadway show, 95 Crazy for You, and then I oh. got pregnant with my third kid, and I said, you know what, I gotta, I gotta be a mom, cause it's too much. The kids were on the road with me. My two older kids were on the road with me since they were babies, and they were like five and six at the time. And I was like, wow, they need to have a normal life like I didn't have, and, and my kid, my third kid had some special issues, some special needs that I really needed to, take care of. He's now, you just spoke to him on the phone. He's now, he has his phone when you called. He's going to be 16 and he's really in a good place. And uh, I took those 15 years off and now I'm, I married a cop from Las Vegas Metro because yeah. I had a stalker and yeah. he was the detective on the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had to get protection so you married him. <laughs> <laughs> what a, you know, what a yeah. story. Uh, it is, it's a, it's a, you know, life is just, you never know what's going to happen next. And I just got to go with the flow and thank God I found him and he, I moved here to Vegas because he's on Metro. He's a cop on Metro. And so I started working here a little bit because I started seeing all my friends and I'd go see their shows and they'd say, come on yeah, stage. Yeah, but you're do doing great right there. Your show's getting I love it. I love it. I yeah. started, I was in New York at the Metropolitan for 
a week and they're bringing me back in October. This is at the Rouse Room in San Francisco. I'm working on a reality show called The Life of Pia with the Discovery Channel. And mm-hmm. and there's a deal here on a regular basis that we're looking at. And it's just kind of fun to get back in the mainstream. And I'm really enjoying it. So it's all good. No, Pia. But, uh, yeah? Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, no. I can talk forever. So you, you have to interrupt me. I, I, can, I can listen forever. Hey, listen. Uh, Frank Sinatra, and, and you did give a, a lot of your story, but but I gotta ask you, he's brilliant and he did help you. But there's also some other really impressive things. You worked with Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, and narrator Michael Walden. Are you kidding me? How did they interact in your life? That's well, that's amazing. That was my pop career when I when when I was nominated for the Grammy and I was doing all the pop stuff. Narda is now my best friend. His stuff is amazing. Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, I had a blast with. Their stuff is amazing. But the thing with me is that I need to just really apply my voice and 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 make an impression. So you need the big songs like The Man That Got Away and Come Rain or Come Shine to really kick butt. But my daughter, Katie, Katie Z, has a song now, and it's on the charts in the U.K., and it's coming here. So she's doing what I did. It's kind of weird how things recycle. She's doing the pop stuff. Yeah, I was going to ask you, are the kids involved in the entertainment business? And, yeah. and obviously you just answered that. Hey, listen, your movie career produced films that had a cult following. They earned you a few Razzies, but kept you in the public eye. Now, uh, what I want to know, will there be a sequel to Santa Claus Conquers the Martians? <laughs> uh, oh, we, my we, God. It was just released on Blu-ray. Isn't that bad enough? I mean, it was a film that I did when I was like, Seven years old. And I thought I got, you were three. Yeah. No. Nah, well, I looked three <laughs> because I was always short. But I got to keep all the dolls. I had a ball, and all of a sudden, you know, I become Pia Zadora when I'm 20 or something like that. And this movie comes back to bite me in the butt. And I'm like, hello. I was just heading out a career. I was seven years old. So whatever. Whatever. Yeah, but, okay. So so you take that. It's a cult film. People do watch it. But then you've also worked with Stacey Keach, uh, Orson Welles, Tallulah Bankhead, John Waters, Tully Savalas, and how was it to work with the late Leslie Nielsen in Naked Gun 33? Oh, G-O-M-G. What a doll. He is the funniest, sweetest guy you ever want to meet. And he'll just do anything. He'll put himself out there. He's so open and so confident. And all he did is walk around with a fart bag and make everybody laugh every time he'd sit down. He'd sit did he really fart. do it? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, he really did it. He really did it. He was a real sweetheart. And that was one of my favorite things I did was that scene in Naked Gun 33. Because I love, you know, spoofing and, and singing and having fun and having your wig being pulled off and and I love the John Waters. Let's get naked and smoke. He wanted me to be Deborah Harry's daughter in that. He wanted me to be the itchy prom queen. And yeah. I was touring. And he said, well, come do a cameo. And he said, okay. Uh, I said, okay. And he said, all right, okay, you're a beatnik. And I thought the beatnik, John. I'm a little, you know, girl from Queens, and I was sheltered. I don't know from beatniks. He said, okay, come to Baltimore. He threw me howl. Sat me on Divine's lap, and all of a sudden, <laughs> Rick O'Casey came in, and I got naked and smoked, and, and that was the most fun I had, too. It was like two days of bliss with John Waters, because he had fallen in love. We have, The two of us had fallen in love when he did an interview for American Film when I was doing Lonely Lady, which probably was one of the worst films of all time, which probably, uh, you know, it, you know, it was it was the cult thing that you talked about where people got together every week and threw tomatoes at the film. But I didn't know. I thought, okay, here's a girl who was, you know, a downtrodden and wanted to be successful in Hollywood and, and want, she was a writer and, and she won the Academy Award. But it just didn't turn out the way it should have been. But that's how we met and he interviewed me for that. And now I have a chapter in his book. And he's one of my favorite people ever. In fact, I'm looking at his Christmas card right here <laughs> on my billboard. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, to, my, to my listening audience, just in time for Passover, we reveal this. As a kid, Pia Zadora was in Fiddler on the Roof on Broadway. Funny, you don't look Jewish. Hey, how was that? Was that scary? I, think I don't you were know. Four I, in I, that. Always, I always played Jewish kids. I, I did a lamp into my feet thing where I sang the Hanukkah prayers when I was like five on TV. Huh. And I was the youngest daughter in Fiddler for two years on Broadway. Uh, I was with Zero Michelle, with Zero Adler, Herschel Bernardi. I was a kid, you know, and, and Havana Gila Hava, my son, 
whose father is Israeli, was in the Israeli army, so he just got yep. back. And uh, so, but I'm I'm a Shiksa. <laughs> you are funny. You are funny as hell. I'm a practicing Shiksa. <laughs> yeah, but you were married to a Jewish. I was guy. married to two Jews. I I got a thing oh. for Jews. I finally oh. found a Shagus. <laughs> <laughs> Italian Catholic boy, and okay, this is it. We're settling down. Yeah, but it's great. You devoted, but you devoted 15 years to your family, and that's awesome that you did that. I and you even to. put your career on hold for that. And what you're doing now, uh, making a comeback, is tough to do. But people will will come out. They're seeing you. They're watching you in Vegas. I got a question. You bought Mary Pickford's estate. So after rebuilding that, okay, how many bedrooms did it have? Oh, God, more than I could count. I mean, How many did you just, use? Well, there was one upstairs, which was the master bathroom, and then there were the kids' bathrooms, and there was a powder room downstairs. Oh, no, I'm talking about bedroom. Oh, yeah, that oh, many bathrooms? Bed, yeah. <laughs> there were a lot of, I mean, it's a big freaking estate. It was a big fair estate. I never wanted to move into that place, but my ex was very <laughs> pompous, and he's like, we need to have pick fair for you. So I ended up doing ghost stories. That was the best thing that happened to pick fair because oh, – yeah. There were ghosts in that freaking place. Trust me. They would dance on the ceiling at night. Okay, that's Beetlejuice. But listen, this is but for my but for my female listeners, and I have to ask this because I take care of everybody. How big was your closet? Oh, huge. That's (laughs) the only thing I miss is my closet because my closet was like my bedroom is now, and now I have to share a closet with my cop husband, and that that's hard to do. I, you know, those days, are, it was a different era in those days. I kind of like consolidating and being more practical at this point in my life because it just feels good. I guess I needed to do, uh, you know, I needed to, to rebound and fix my mistake. Well, one of my favorite restaurants is where you live. I, I love um, the Pepper Mill. I eat in the Pepper oh, Mill. Oh, yeah. The yeah, Peppermill is a late night place. Do you want yeah, to know they have something? Yeah, fireplaces in there. Yeah, I have never freaking been there. And Rich Little goes there after every show. After he came to see my show at the Smith Center, and Steve Rossi and all the people go there. And it's right up the street from the Riviera. So when you yeah. come to town, we're going to go there. Yeah, no, we're going to go there. But when we when I come out there, uh, I want to go to Talon XS with you. Okay, can we do that? Yeah, four four of us will go there. You want to do that? That'll yeah. Be fun. Absolutely. You've got to be. I want to talk about your show. Yes. Um, you know what? You've got some major league people writing for you. Okay. You got Vinny Falcone on piano. Tell yeah, everybody Vinny, who this guy is. Vinny Come was on. Frank's conductor and arranger for years and years and years, and he is an icon. And he he did my first album with it, London Philharmonic and all that, and I worked with him for years. So when I moved back to Vegas, I contacted him, and we started working together again. He's the absolute best of the best. Then I have John Max, who works for David Letterman, Jay Leno, and the Oscars, and all that kind of stuff. He does my dialogue, helps me, you know, formulate what I'm going to say. And we have Larry Grossman, Walter Painter, Walter, choreographer, director, um, six-time Emmy winner, and uh, Larry Grossman, Tony winner. You know, like a lot of people from my roots that have helped me put this show together. And there's a little clip of Frank in it talking about me, a little clip of George Burns and Milton Burl and all the people that, you know, I was a part of working with. So sure. it's kind of cool because it's like coming back to my roots in a way. Let's Can you do me a favor? Are you near know. a window? Me, Can you, what... I'm serious. Could you look out your window and tell me what Carlos Santana is doing right now? How did you know? He told you. What do you mean? He, He's brewing tequila. How did you know that he was extremely? <laughs> He's brewing his organic tequila, which is what I drink, Casa Nobles, because I'm only organic. Unlike yourself, I I care about my body. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't care about my. I know, but you need to be more conscious of the organic stuff. I know, but he's your neighbor. That's cool. So yeah. Now, I, so I have to ask you this. Yep. Okay. Who, who's on your iPod, and is Carlos Santana on there? Because I'd hate him to be with you and you on your iPod and you not have his song. I don't have an iPod. I just have a computer, and I have a notebook. Which is How about your smartphone? Yeah, it's a big one, though. It's one of those, you know, mother phones. 
because oh. I just need to have it bigger because I just, you know, I don't know. I don't like these little phones that get on my nerves. I only got two questions left because we're running out of time. First okay. of all, where do you like to vacation? When you go away and you want to chill, where do you like to go? Well, Hawaii or Brian Head. Because <laughs> Brian Head's three hours away. But I've always loved Hawaii. It's just a chill place. They have great pina coladas. Maui, of course, is my favorite. And since, and since we're in Atlantic City, uh, I have to ask you, growing up in North Jersey, which is really not part of South Jersey, they we hate each other. They don't like us. We don't like them. It's two different states. Oh, it's uh, but, a uh, story, huh? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. So, but do you have any Atlantic City memories or stories uh, of coming to Atlantic City? Well, the only thing I remember is when I had a uh, tooth when I was little that was loose. I had the saltwater taffy, and the tooth came out in the saltwater taffy. And the other thing is I was always obsessed with horses. So my mother used to bring me to the steel pier to see the horse jump off the steel pier. But later on, I, I appeared at the Trump and, and uh, Resort City National. So I have good memories as a grown-up when my kids were little running along the beach there. I love I love it in the city. Yeah, well, we want to get you back here. We're going to work real hard to get you here. Okay. I think you're great. And you are such a sweetheart. I really love that you took the time to spend a few minutes on the show today. And to my listening audience, I'm not kidding. This is a threat. Berman will be right back. 